text at all. For instance, here's a ruler. And I know that that line is at least seven. So I'm gonna write down the seven here. So I'm gonna put down seven. Now, if you notice there's lines after the seven, which are the little millimeter lines, but since there's 10 lines between, or from the seven up to the eight, all these are gonna be 10. So I'm gonna say that that's seven point. And to me, it looks like it's at least two, possibly three. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it's 7.2. Sorry about my poor handwriting here. So let me just write this a little bit better. I'm gonna say it's 7.2. And I'm thinking, well, my golly, it's almost up to the three, but I don't, I'm not sure where that's at. So I'm gonna estimate one decimal place beyond the number that I know. So you could say it's 7.25. It looks to me even further than that. So I might say 7.28, something like that. And then after that, you put down the units, which would be centimeters, okay? So once again, you're gonna write down the numbers you know. I know the seven's right. I know the seven, Point two is right, and then I'm going to estimate one beyond. Some people might even say that that is 7.30, okay? And because they think it looks like it's right on the three mark. So any of those are fine. Now I flip the ruler over, and instead of the metric side, I'm looking at the English side. So this is going to be measuring inches. And there's not 10 lines from the two up to the three anymore. Now there's 16. So I'm not going to use decimal places. I'm going to use fractions. And I really am not going to estimate out. So this looks like, to me, it's at least two. Okay, well, shoot, sorry about that. Let me put my pen up here. I have at least two. And if you look right here, that would be two and eight sixteenths. Whoops, I just moved the, the ruler here. This one right here would be two and eight sixteenths. And oh, goodness sakes, this would be two and eight sixteenths. And I'm going to count from there: nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So they, to me, it looks about two and fourteen sixteenths. And then I'm going to put that in lowest terms, so it'd be two and seven eighths inches. And so that's how you do the English ruler. Now, if you look at the graduation graduated cylinder here, it's going to be the same process. If you notice, there's the 50 mark right here, okay, or not. Let's get this in the right. There's a 50 mark right there. There's a 60 mark right here. And we have 10 lines that are in between the 50 or from the 50 up to the 60. So that means that each one is worth one. So this would be 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. Now, if you look really, really closely, that looks like it would be 57, 58 because the top line here, you look at this red mark, the top line goes up to here. But that's because the water wants to climb up the side of the graduated cylinder. So I want you to read the bottom of the meniscus. If you look really closely, you can see that the bottom edge of the water is actually curved like this. So I want you to read the bottom of the um, edge of the water here. And when you do that, I'm gonna have 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. 57, but it doesn't look like it's right up to the 57 right now. So I'm going to write down the numbers that I know. So I'm going to write down the five, the 50 rather. I'm going to write down the six, and then I have to estimate one digit out beyond what the graduations are. Well, since the graduations are the ones digit, you can see the six digit is the one that you know, I'm going to estimate one out. So I'm going to say it's 56 point, uh, looks like about eight, and this would be milliliters. On the next graduate cylinder, it looks a little bit different because here's the six line right here. I can get the same to actually right. This is the six line. That's the seven line. And there are five lines from the six up to the seven. So that means each line is worth one fifth, or you could say 0.2. So this would be 6.2, this would be 6.4, 6.6, 6.8. But you gotta remember that you gotta read the bottom of the meniscus on a graduated cylinder. And this one is really, really, really messed up here. Uh, and if you look real, real closely, you'll see that the meniscus comes down and curves like this. Okay, so if I were going to read this, I would come back here. I'm going to read the number that I know that the uh, water line passes, which is the six. So I'm going to put down six. I know it passed the 6.2, the 6.4, the 6.6, but it looks like it might be slightly above the 6.6. 6. 
And if you look at the sig fig rule for measuring, you're going to take it one decimal place out from where you know the uh, graduation ends. So I'm going to say it's about 6.61 in this case, and this would be milliliters. So if we go back to the first graduated cylinder, this only had one decimal place because the lines stood for the ones digit. You had the 50 and the six that you knew, so we estimated out to the eight. If you go to the little teeny graduated cylinder, the line stood for 0.2, so I knew that the 0.6 was you know, one of the graduations. So I had to take that out an extra decimal place. If you go back to your ruler, once again, I'm gonna flip this over here. The line stood for the 7.2. So I knew the, the lines went out to the 0.2. I had to take it out one more spot. And so when I wrote down the answer, I said it was 7.28. Let's do one more now. Here is the thermometer that I'm holding. And if you notice, there are 10 lines between from the 10 up to the 20. So that means every line here is worth one degree. And so if you look at it, it looks like this line here, well, come on, write for me. Looks like it goes slightly above the 21. So I'm gonna say that that 21 is definite because each line stands for the ones digit, okay? The big lines are the tens and the twenties, that's the tens digit. The little lines in between are the, are the ones digit. So I'm gonna say, okay, this is 21, but I have to estimate the last digit. And since it's slightly above it, I'm gonna say maybe 21.2 degrees Celsius. So once again, you always estimate one digit out from where the lines on the device go. And then finally, when um, measuring a triple beam balance, I guess it's a quadruple beam balance like you see here, you're going to uh, place the object you're measuring on the pan, and then you're going to slide these weights over into the notches until the pointer points to the zero mark. And then when you read it, you simply add up all the numbers. So if you notice, you got the 100 in the first window, so I know it's 100. Come on now, you got 100. The 70 is in the second uh, window. The four is in the third window. And then it gets a little tricky. The little uh, pointer down here has passed the 0.5, so I know it's gonna be 174.5, okay? It looks to me like it is almost up to the five line. It passed the four line, but it's not quite up to the five line. So I'm going to go ahead and put down a four here. And what the rule says is you have to always estimate one decimal place beyond what it, the uh, lines read. Well, my last line reads 0.4. So I'm going to say, gosh, it's almost right there. I'm going to say 548 or 549. Okay, so that last digit's always the one that's estimated. And this would also be measured in grams. Well, come on, pin in grams. I've got to get me a better stylus.